Hi, I'm Doug Lyon, a Teach Video Production at Brighton University. Lovely. So after talking to you about our topic so far, I just wanted to get what your understanding of the word authentic is and what it means to you personally. Well, I, I think in relation to what we've been talking about in this project, there's something authentic to me is something about doing your own thing without anybody else saying that you should do this, you should do that, or worrying about whether you fit in or you're on trend or any of that kind of stuff. That's generally what happens with like a band's first album, and then by the time they're at their third album, they're making, you know, their lyrics are about groupies on the bus or like they've kind of lost it or the record company's told them we need another hit so you need to do one like that and then you can just tell that, that they haven't got that authenticity anymore so I, I, I think it's about unfiltered re realness that's not a word is it realness un unself-conscious it's about being unselfconscious and just doing your own thing. As soon as you start worrying about what somebody else thinks, I don't see how you can really be authentic anymore. Would you consider yourself authentic? Oh, I stopped caring what anybody else thinks a long time ago, so that's why I like... But it's like the socks and crocs thing still amuses me to this day. How many people get plugged in by it? I don't know, that's a punk thing. It, um, it's a bonus to me that people get annoyed by my crocs. So I don't know whether that's authentic or not. It's a bit silly, really, isn't it, when I say it like that? But, um, you know, I'm 53, so like I'm not really looking to fit in with somebody else's fashion ideas or what I should look like. So I guess so. I guess that's my own version of authenticity. So you just spoke about, obviously, like the age difference, like um, that you don't care anymore. But obviously, today's generation do seem to care. Would you say that we're unauthentic? I think it's just such a different time. I think your generation is authentic in different ways. I think you're more open. I think you're, like I was very snobby really about style and music and all sorts of things when I was younger. I think it's easy to say that you're a bit flippant or a bit indiscriminate because your generation likes a bit of everything. But I think that's kind of quite healthy as well to like a bit of everything. And like I had a very tight frame around what I liked and anything outside of it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out with a girl if she didn't like the same music as me. Like looking back on that now, that seems a bit silly. But I had ed we had edges to things. But I kind of think the fact that you don't have edges to things is a different form of authenticity. I think it's really open. Um, from being a punk, and you've gone through, you've seen the different ways that people rebel and go against the mainstream and what society says. Do you feel that that's what there is a lack of today that we haven't, like with the political climate, kind of young people aren't, we don't really rebel because there's nothing really to rebel against, like what people would say. I think there's more to rebel against now than there was when I was your age. I mean, God, we're, we're stepping over dying people in the streets of Brighton. Like, we're the fifth richest country in the world and we're stepping over actually dying people in the streets. Like, that's not right. You know, there's plenty to complain about or rebel about against. I just think that whole thing about rebelling against the man or sticking it to the man, that kind of anti-authority thing, it's kind of different now because I don't, I don't know. I don't think we trust anybody. We don't trust politicians. We don't trust police. Like a lot of the people who are meant to be in charge that we used to trust, we just don't anymore. I think a lot of people don't, or they just don't believe them, or they're not interested in them. So in a way, you could say that disengaging is a different form of rebellion. It's like just completely like whatever, just get you get on with it. I mean, we'll see, we're heading for a general election. It'd be nice to think that your generation would roll out and get the Conservatives out of power, in my personal opinion, that would be a very useful form of rebellion. Or, you know, if everybody came out and got Donald Trump impeached in America, I think that would be a pretty handy form of rebellion. There's plenty of things to rebel against. But I think 
that's your job really to to work out what to do with it all i don't know anymore i think everything's changed so much it's a difficult time that we live in it's complicated so i don't know i don't really know the answer to that Go, going on from that one then why do you think that the statistic is so high of 18 to 25 year olds who don't vote because it's probably not because they're doing it to ignore it no, but, well, I think young people don't vote today because they really get it that politicians aren't authentic. Who's talking with your voice in Parliament? I mean, if you ever watch the news or watch Parliament, there's Myrie Black, the Scottish, uh, you know, she's the same age as you, who's a Scottish MP. I mean, she speaks with a young person's voice and she's not afraid of any but all those old blokes in Parliament. She's amazing. But that's like one one MP out of every, everybody that you might look at and go, oh, she's like us, but she's got a, a strong opinion. Maybe I'll jump on board that train. You know, loads of old blokes talking about stuff, and they're just, they're all lying. I think that's why people have just wandered off and just leave, just leave them to it. They're just a bunch of liars talking to them, each other. Mm. Maybe. Or, or maybe you just think there's no point in voting because I don't agree with the system. So that's what Russell Brand said. There's no point in voting because you get the same system anyway. So what's the point? Yeah, I agree. Going on from that, um, looking at like where obviously you teach a lot of like young women who are in education and like quite strong women. But do you think women, well especially young women, are aware of what feminism actually is? Well, feminism is another old paradigm that most of the young women that I teach think isn't really much to do with them. So I think there's an assumption that maybe some of the battles have been won or maybe it's not relevant anymore. I think it absolutely is as relevant as it ever was but I do think it sort of needs a little bit of a makeover and again that's back to like well who's the role models that we can look up to in our society that you go oh yeah that's what it looks like to be a strong passionate woman who's uncompromising who doesn't trade on their sexuality necessarily might do if they feel like it might not if they don't maybe like Kathleen Moran's a little bit like that but I think we're short of role models. I, I really think that's an issue in our society. So, uh, I, I mean, I think you two are feminists. You might not call yourself that, but you're trying to work out who you are and what you're doing with yourself and where your power lies and what to do with it all. Oh, it's, I don't know, maybe it needs another word. Mm, yeah, like we kind of tainted the word. So people, not we, like previous. Yeah underins and waves of feminism has kind of made people scared of the world? I think, yeah, I think... I think there's, everything's got turned up. The media now is so saturated, social media is so saturated. People are tired of things. They're tired of hearing the same old story again and again and again and things not really changing very much, so... I don't know, it's your two's job to go out into the world. You, you know, maybe you've got the answer. Maybe that's what will come out of this project, a little seed of something that in three years' time you go, I'm going to do something with that, and maybe you do something, and that goes viral, and people go, yeah, let's jump on board that train, and you change the world. Lovely. So, obviously, you've got a strong music background, working in radio, and obviously you love bands, your music. Do you feel that there's a lack of female visibility in music and like art and fashion? And then also comparing that from when obviously you were, when it was like punk women bands were actually a thing. I think probably it's better for women now than it was in the 70s when the punk thing happened. But we're back to the authentic thing. You know, the punk thing for a brief moment was an authentic display of kind of sticking it to the man and just being like, you know, learn three chords, form a band have a bit of attitude and shout about it and have some fun with it, I think that, that time's gone. I think we live in a time where like X Factor and social media and all that kind of thing is so plugged into being liked. Everybody wants to be liked by people that they don't know or really care about. That doesn't really make any sense to me, needing to be liked by somebody that you don't, you've never met them 
you don't even care what they think about anything else but you want them to like you that strikes me as a sticky wicket so I think yeah, you know like Gaga and Madonna are kind of at the position at the top of the tree to sort of not care but that's all right if you're a millionaire s isn't it i mean they're not worried about paying the bills i think we also live in a time where everybody's worried about paying the bills so it's much harder to um outwardly show that you don't agree with what's going on because you everybody's frightened i think like if you think you've got a lot to lose, it's a lot more difficult to be rebellious. You, you either have to not care what you've got to lose or not have anything to lose to really just go, right, I'm just going to do this. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't know whether people do that that much these days. So would you feel that female visibility is like a lot lower than the male? Well, I just think we're, we're, we're back to that. Um, sort of pop glamour look now that everybody wants to look sort of glossy and glamorous and that hasn't really moved on in decades you know or or there's a sort of punky look but it's just a look now it's all ready to come off it's off the hook look so i mean i haven't seen i found a band actually called made of ace you heard of them oh, ace of maid made of ace they're four sisters from Hastings, punk, all, all girl punk band. I stumbled across online the other day, and they're brilliant. And they're just like, they all do stunt bike stuff and jump about, and they're all sisters and like a proper girl gang. Brilliant punk stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's nice to see. Mm. Quite rare. And they're not glammed up or they're kind of punky. I don't know. And I guess. What's good about them is they can, you know, do a video single, bung it up online, and they're not having to deal with the music industry. They're not; be they're clearly not filtered yet. Give them another album or two, we'll see. But it's nice to see that coming up. Can I put really quick? Could you answer your? Um, can you start the answer with the question? Sorry. Yeah. What am I on about? Do I think there's something about visibility? Mm. It's right. You can just go for the next, for the next one. <sighs> yep. Ne yeah. Um, just wanted to pick up on what you said about like off the hook, kind of the look mm. of punk. What do you think that, especially young females, they were so accessible to like the high street brands that it's a kind of punch in the face to what punks were doing back then? Like you were, you were trying and you made your clothes, and now we can just go buy it, but for like the massive price price tag. Do you? How do you feel about that? What's the question? Oh, yeah, what do I need to say to start that one? Um, on the one about the off the hook look. Yeah. Do I think that off the hook look is a thing? I think it's like, it's easy. People do things that are easy. So somebody plays a tune, you go, oh, I like that tune. Then 10 minutes later, you've got it on your phone for nothing. You see somebody walk past you, oh, that's a good look. You know, by the end of the week, you can have that look. I think it's easy, I think people always do what's easy, so they used to say necessity is the mother of invention. So when you had to take your flares in or go and get a dog collar from the pet shop and make it yourself or any of that kind of stuff, you had a sense of crafting your own individual look that felt authentic. As soon as people went to the shop and bought something, we were like, ooh, plastic punks, that's cheating. We thought it was cheating. Well, I don't think that's like that anymore. I think, I don't know even know if it matters anymore, but that's kind of like bricolage. Like you, t you two, the word bricolage that I keep coming back to is you've got signifiers from all sorts of places all over the place that you've made up your own configuration of that, and that's your version of authenticity. So, I don't know, we're kind of obsessed with being original in our society. I, I think that's different if you go to a lot of the rest of the world where you can be a covers band and be taken seriously in Europe or you can sound like your favourite band and people think that's good. If you sound like your favourite band here, people are like, well, what's the point of you? You just sound like that band that you like. But that's the kind of snobbiness that we still do have. Cool. Um, sorry. Do you think um, signifiers like piercings and tattoos have much meaning anymore? Do they have much meaning? 
you kind of what they do to them. me that piercings still mean something to me I think they do to you so like you know I'm 53 and I've still got the remnants of bits and bobs in my ears and why don't I take them out well, there's still some attachment there to, to that um, it's not just because I think they look nice it's not even about looking nice it's a signifier of alternativeness still so you know you can walk into Topshop and see lots of young women who are buying the Ramones t-shirt with piercings who are then going to go out to prison that night like that's where I get a little bit confused because it feels like there's a look of being a bit edgy or alternative that doesn't have anything to do with an attitude so that's kind of what I think is the context around it is a bit of attitude I don't know if that's an answer do I think it might but do I think piercings do you think matter Brought yeah. too far into the mainstream that they've lost any sense of. So, what, why did you get your your ears pierced? Well, originally, um, well, you know, back. I mean, I was twenty odd. It wasn't. Blokes didn't really get their ears pierced in those days, and it was definitely a punky thing to be a bloke and have your ear pierced. Um, I felt like an outsider. I felt like an outsider when I was a lad. I moved schools a lot. So there was a point in me where I was like, I'm not trying to fit in. I'm actively making a statement that I don't fit in. And I, yes, I am an outsider and I'm going to wear it as a badge on the outside just to clarify that right from the start. And then either jump on board my train and accept me for who I am or fuck off. But. I guess that was a kind of attack as a form of defence thing, like being a bit intimidating as a form of defence before anything happened. I mean, if you turn the volume up and you see people with a face full of piercings, that definitely makes you feel something, doesn't it? You know, you see people with really loads, you're like, whoa, that's still a thing. That definitely means something. It's you're putting something in the way of your face that is a bit scary or a bit aggressive. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it means to you. I don't know what your piercings mean to you, really. Mm. Do you not think it's, like, especially like the nose ring, that was a definite, like, a fashion statement not that long ago for young girls. Mm. And then... But we're all looking for something else to do with ourselves, aren't we? I mean, what can you do with his eyebrows, wasn't it? Mm. You know, at one point, or... We're just a bit bored with ourselves, so we're just, I mean, some of it's just faffing about with ourselves, isn't it? Just for entertainment. Yeah. Okay, probably one of the last questions, but you're picking up as well what you said um, about social media. Do you think um, in society today we rely too much on like, social media? Does it have a, too much of a strong impact on our lives and what we do? Um, I think what's good about social media is we've got alternative news. So like the press now, to me in this country, the press are so corrupt, so kind of hand in hand with the right wing, that even The Guardian and The Independent and the BBC to a certain extent, who are kind of at least objective or, or centre left, they've all been pulled over now. So it's like, well... If they're all the same, where do you go to read something that isn't negative about Jeremy Corbyn? You've got to subscribe to the Canary online and plug that into your Facebook and kind of look at, that's what I do. So that's where I like social media. I think it's really handy to find online communities and plug into them and go, oh yeah, there's lots of people like me, but they're not in my area. They're like a digital community. I really like that. And I like to share things. But I think that need, it's back to the need to be liked thing. If you're, if you're doing something because you want to be liked by people that you've never even met, I kind of think that's losing it a bit. So, and I think constructing an online identity that is an idealised version of yourself that you put out to the world that's like, look at me, I'm like this, but you're not really like that. 
I just think that's a bit of a sticky wicket because then you get trapped in the act of being like something that you're not really like. So it's still quite new, really, social media. I mean, it's only been around in its current form for 10, 15 years or something. So I don't really think we know what we're doing with anything anymore. Do you, do you think that um, a lot of people, a lot of like, in our generation, we're, we're looking for approval online and we get caught up in that world of searching for people to approve of us? Well, I think, I think searching for approval online is only an extension of what people do in their normal everyday lives anyway. It's just turn the volume up. And because so many people are doing it, then it's become a really big thing. And then it's like this thing about memes or, or you know, you go out with your mates and you're having a nice time, you've had a few drinks, somebody gets their bloody camera phone out and then you all go into this leaning in, holding a thing routine that's like... That's like some kind of weird Victorian kind of... You don't have to stay still. You don't have to lean in. That both of those things aren't necessary, but everybody does it. So that's the trouble, is you get this behaviour that... Um, it looks awkward to me. It looks like people don't know what to do with themselves, so they've learned it. You know, it seems to have gone down a bit now, but that whole sort of turning to the side and doing your... The model thing seems to have died down a bit. That, that became a thing for ages. Oh, then people put their head to one side. That's sort of common thing at the moment. Mm, I'm looking thoughtful. You know, I mean, I don't know. They're funny little weird online fashions that are like... I don't like uniforms. I don't like it when everybody does the same thing. That seems to me like not knowing who you are and just copying something because you think it looks good. I mean, that's the opposite of authentic to me in a way. And lastly, do you think, would you have liked to have social media around when you were out? No, I'm so glad. I mean, I didn't have social media when I was your age and I don't got any photos of anything that I did at all. Like everything that you do that you endlessly record, I don't have anything. Like I was going to Glastonbury Festival for years and telling people like, have you heard about Glastonbury? Like, I thought it was just some hippies in a field. It's like, sort of, but it's amazing. Like, well, what was it, what's it like? Oh, I can't bother to tell you. I don't want you to go if you don't want to go. Like, that world is completely gone now. When you can watch the whole of Glastonbury Festival from your sofa, it's not special in the same way, is it? Like, I, I, I wish I had some photos to look back on in some ways, but there's another part of me that is about... Well, those memories are mine. They weren't shared unless I was with somebody, and that's just a memory. Like, if we'd gone to Glastonbury in the 80s, we'd be like, remember when we went, there was hardly anybody there, and you could climb over a barbed wire fence and get in for nothing. I mean... So everything... I don't know, I think that's the trouble, is people are not only recording everything, they're recording an experience that they haven't even had. So they're recording a band through their phone whilst they're watching it, and then they upload the video, and then they don't even watch the video. So that, to me, is insanity. Like, you've missed the band that you went to see because you were looking at your phone, and then you've gone to all that trouble to record something and upload it, and you haven't even watched the video back because you weren't there. You were distracted by all this stuff. So, yeah, we're crazy. It's all crazy. We're all doomed. It's your job to put it all right. <laughs> now shoulders now. <laughs>